award-winning poet, activist, and transformational leader, Sonia Renee Taylor, believes in the life-shifting power of art and community. Sonia is founder and CEO of The Body Is Not An Apology, an intersectional international movement of radical self-love and body empowerment reaching over 100,000 people weekly. She is the creator of the Radically Unapologetic Healing Challenge Project, a 30-day transformational healing action to address pain, shame, trauma, and fear in our lives. Sonia is also a national and international poetry slam champion, author and educator who has mesmerized audiences across the country, as well as in prisons, mental health treatment centers, homeless shelters, universities, festivals, and public schools across the globe. Please welcome our keynote speaker, Sonia Renee Taylor. What's up, y'all? <laughs> Let me just start by saying um, I'm so outrageously excited to be here that I'm like so full of these amazing students and speakers who just got up here and just blew my I had here when I walked in here. <laughs> but they just blew it off, they just blew it off. Give it up for your student speakers again today. It's amazing. And then I want you to lean over to your neighbor right now, I just want you to lean over to your neighbor, I want you to say, damn, I did it. <laughs> right, right? <laughs> it's huge. Good afternoon, Hampshire staff. Oh, before I even do that, here's a lesson, immediate life lesson. At closed mouth, don't get fed, right? Yesterday, I was at the farmer's market, and I saw some folks from here, and they were like, you know what? Shout us out when you get on stage. So shout out to Dana, OC, and Melissa, whose birthday's on Sunday. They asked for what they needed. I got them. Gotta ask for what you need, right? <laughs> so good morning, Hampshire staff, faculty, students, families, and most importantly, graduating class of 2015. I really can't even begin to explain how just utterly excited and profoundly honored I am to be here speaking with you all today. Um, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. This is my first commencement speech ever. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? <laughs> now, I'm not supposed to tell you that, am I? Right? I'm supposed to get up here and act like I got all my ish together, right? <laughs> like I'm the expert and you all are the students. Well, here's my second piece of advice. There are no experts on living, right? There are no experts on living. <laughs> the only thing the expert knows is that they don't know Jack. <laughs> See, we live in a planet of infinite ideas, experiences, thoughts, actions. The possibility that we might have them all figured out is an impossibility. And even trying to think that that might be the case just causes stress and frustration. Right? See, the word failing only exists on the premise that something didn't work. But what if we weren't trying to make it work? What if this was all, as I've heard many of the trustees say, an experiment? <laughs> right? In an experiment, there is no figured out. There is only do the experiment examine the findings. Do the experiment, examine the findings. See, if you want to leave a legacy in this world, you better get committed to after this moment being a research student for the rest of your life. See, Martin Luther King Jr. <laughs> 
Martin Luther King Jr. was a researcher. He was researching whether nonviolence could be a successful tactic against racism. He did the experiment, examined the findings, did the experiment in Birmingham, examined the findings, did it in Montgomery, examined the findings. See, the most impactful humans in society are the ones who have an idea and just keep testing it. And you can only build legacy with that. There's no failing in that space, right? You know, now I know you guys had, you know, you had the, the flossy folks last year. Laverne spoke. <laughs> Diva flyness that she is. Right. <laughs> so when I got the phone call, I must say, I was like, oh, for real? <laughs> but I imagine that you all brought me here because I'm a pretty well-known performance poet and... I founded an international movement and company focused on radical self-love and body empowerment as a tool for social justice and global change called The Body Is Not An Apology. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I feel so honored because you all have this justice thing down, right? It's what you do here. And, that's why I dig you like I dig you. But I want to talk about something a little bit more practical in this speech today. I want to talk about something a little more practical. So I want you to raise your hand if you have student loans. Go on ahead and raise. Oh, Lord Jesus. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Now I want you to raise your hand if you are planning to defer your student loans raise your hand if you're planning to, okay it's just a few of y'all talking about deferments okay well the fact that you have student loans means that my topic is important so today i'm going to talk about student loans right it's, i want you to look over your neighbor and be like this is about to be the most boring graduation speech in life <laughs> work with me work with me more importantly, I want to talk about what I call the cost of deferment. See, someone tell me what happens to your loans when you defer them. Just yell it out. And, oh, look at y'all smart people. <laughs> Interest, right, exactly. They get more expensive over time, right? So, if you hold true to what I said a minute ago, that life is an experiment, and that our work here is to be research students, then guess what? Honey, you gonna owe some student loans, right? Now I know somebody's like, but no, really no, Sonya, like I didn't take them out on purpose. Like I'm no, like I'm not deferring them, no. Sorry, I got bad news for you, it's real. <laughs> now, I, uh, I did a tarot reading before I came here. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I grew up Pentecostal, but I'm hella new agey, so it's all of that is in there. So unfortunately, I have the most um, depressing graduation prediction that you've ever had in your whole life. I'm really sorry. Are you ready for it? You ready? Yeah, I know. It was like, no, really not. But you're gonna die. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I know, it's awful. It's messed up. It's totally messed up. Here's the good news. Here's the good news. Probably not right this second, right? Please don't die during my first commencement speech. That would be messed up. <laughs> Has anybody ever heard of the phrase on borrowed time? Raise your hand if you've heard the phrase on borrowed time. Exactly. See, what that means is that you have been loaned a little time on this planet to do your research, which means you're going to owe some loans back at the end of the day. But we don't know exactly when. None of us does. So I'm going to put my loan counselor hat on a little bit and tell you how a student loan works. I know you guys know this, but it's a refresher course. And remember, I'm a poet, so I speak in metaphor, right? Like that popcorn metaphor? Yo, brilliant. <laughs> So when repayment time comes, you're going to have to pay back what you borrowed, right? And that's called what? That's called the principal, exactly. And in addition to the principal, you are going to be required to pay interest on your loan. 
Now, interest is the amount determined by the lender that you must pay back additionally for borrowing the principal interest, right? The principal amount. Interest is the lender's assessment of the value of a loan over time. See, the shorter it takes you to get the principal together, the less you will owe in interest. Anybody follow me? I'm like a black church right now. I need you to give me some call and response. Like, can't we hear you? Okay. Now, the shorter it takes you to get the principal together, the less you will owe in interest. And it doesn't matter whether you use the principal for its intended purpose or not, you still have to pay it back. Who here didn't go to some classes? You can tell the truth now, right? Like, you're done, right? You ain't go to some classes. Mm -hmm. You still have to pay for them classes, don't you? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's how that works, see. And you can pay the interest on the loan and never have actually paid on the principal. I'm going to say that to you one more time. You can pay the interest on a loan and have never paid any of the principal down. In other words, research students in the school of life, you can pay the cost of living without ever having really lived. Anybody know someone paying the cost of living, but they ain't never really lived? Yes. See now, the word principal, P-A-L, is different, oh, who, who got this all messed up when you was in fifth grade, right? Mm-hmm, I, I still was wrong in the speech, just so you know. So the word principal, P-A-L, is different than the word principal, P-L-E. However, they have the same origin, which is the Latin word princeps, which means first or original. Now, I don't think it's accidental that the word principal, P-L-E, means basic or original law or truth. See, the principal and interest you will repay on your life loan is really about how long it takes you to learn the basic principles, P-L-E, of living on this planet with your borrowed time and your borrowed body. I want you to lean over to your neighbor and say, ain't none of that yours. Just go on ahead. I need you to do that. Mm, ain't none of that yours. Okay. <laughs> Here's what's real, y'all. The longer it takes you to learn your life principles, the harder it is to pay back your loan principles and the highest, higher your interest will be. Now, I'm going to give you a life principle right now. I'm going to give it to you right now. What you put off today will cost you more later. Anybody know that, right? Like, you've learned that one already, right? Mm-hmm. I'm going to give you a little example, though, right? Anybody here drive? Raise your hand if you drive. You got a car. Mm-hmm. Okay. So let's say you need an oil change for your car, but at the 3,000-mile mark, you ignore it. Then at the 9,000-mile mark, you ignore it. Lazy. Then at the 12,000-mile mark of ignoring that oil change, your engine seizes up, and now you are schlepping up I-90 in snowpocalypse, Right? Now, how much was that oil change? At the high end, let's say 50 bucks, right? How much is a new engine? At the high end, that's like $3,000. You get my point, right? Deferment is always more expensive. And if you don't take interest in your life now, the interest on your life loan will be expensive later. Because... An it's real talk, right? <laughs> now, interest is simply the act of appreciation. The British definition of appreciation is an assessment of the true worth or value of persons or things. And generally, things of significant value increase in value over time. Let me share another example. My second job out of college, I was a case manager for adults with chronic mental illness. I had a client named Jack. He was in his late 60s, early 70s. He was tattooed all over his body. He was in the Navy as a young man, and as a young man, he was a raging, abusive alcoholic who was vicious to his wife and children. By the time I got Jack as one of my clients, he was suffering with major depression and stage four prostate cancer. Jack was about to die. Now, this would be the point where you also lean over to your neighbor and you say, this is the most depressing graduation speech. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> 
The deal is that when I met Jack, he was sad, but he was also profoundly kind and gentle. He was nothing like the human that others had written about in my work files. Jack knew he was about to die, and he spent his last days trying to make amends with his wife and children. See, it was almost time to pay back his life loan, and Jack began to, as the British Dictionary states, assess the true worth and value of his family. Do you think Jack had tons of regrets and sadness? That perhaps some of his depression might have been a manifestation of how he treated his wife and kids in the past? Right? Of course. See, Jack's interest was all the sadness and regret he had to live and die with for all the times that he did not truly value his loved ones. And that's how it works, folks. When it's time to pay back what you borrowed, your time in the school of life, your interest rate can be profoundly high, meaning epic regret and pain for all the undid, unsaid, unlived parts of your existence, or your interest rate can be low, meaning peace and love and completion with your life and those in it. But you only get a low interest rate by acting on something or someone's value and worth in the present, i.e. the act of appreciation. See, your life is appreciating whether you appreciate it or not, right? The inherent value of each and every human being is intrinsic on this planet. And if your interest is high at the end of your life, it's because you were not acting in appreciation. Now, I just mentioned that you only get low interest by acting on something or someone's appreciation in the present. What is the present? What's that mean? Right now, right? Question, can you act later? Right, no, no, it's not a trick question, right? <laughs> you can think about acting later, but action is a right now phenomenon. If I tie my shoe tomorrow, once tomorrow gets here, I won't be tying my shoe tomorrow, I'll be tying it right now. See, you can only think about the future. But actions are right now. And assessing true value or worth of someone is an action, which means you can't assess it later. You can't think about acting on someone's appreciation and actually be acting on appreciation. You have to act right now or you're going to have some high interest to pay. The biggest principle of life school is the right now principle. How many of you all have said, oh, I'm going to write that paper that's due on Tuesday later? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What that cost you, <laughs> right? Some of y'all pay some sleep interest, right? Some of y'all pay some stress interest. Some of y'all pay that not at the party squeezing on my booze booty right now this weekend because I got to write this damn paper interest, right? <laughs> See, your interest went up because you didn't accurately assess time right now. Everyone on the planet is going to do something when. When I lose weight, when I find a partner, when I get a great job. I call this the waiting to become syndrome. You do not have to wait to become anything. See, remember, you are appreciating whether you appreciate it or not, right? Which means that you already are. There is no becoming, there is being. And being is a right now phenomenon as well. Y'all, these loans are high in the world because we are afraid to really acknowledge that the only thing we have is right now, tomorrow is hogwash, and you got a research experiment to do right now. See? <laughs> I want to share something with y'all. In four days, I will celebrate my mother's birthday. Her name is Terry Lynn Hines. She would have been 56. Unfortunately, my mother died two and a half years ago at the far too young age of 53. She was a light and a laughter in the world. 
She was known for her peach cobbler, <laughs> her helping spirit, and her 2,000 watt smile. She was also a woman who paid a tremendously high interest on her life loan. Not because she did not appreciate and value her children and family, but because she did not appreciate and value herself. She spent life waiting to become good enough, smart enough, worthy enough. After being abused, molested, shamed for being a teenage mother, she truly could not see that none of those things erased that she was magnificent. She spent years in a crack cocaine addiction trying to escape the pain of feeling like a failure at becoming. She spent much of her life paying the cost of living while not really living. I wish desperately that she would have realized that there was nothing for her to become. She simply just needed to be the miraculous, gorgeous gift she already was in that exact moment. I got the phone call that she passed while I was at a conference in Texas. I had stopped talking to my mother and taking most of her phone calls because she was drinking and because I was angry at her for not knowing, not having figured it out. My anger at my mother was my own version of not acting in appreciation of her value in the right now. And just like that, she was gone. I had to pay the interest on deferring time with my mother. And losing her was one of the most intense pains I've ever experienced. And it was because she left here without knowing her immense value in my life and in the world. And because I did not get to share with her what I am sharing with you right now. Because I didn't understand that principle yet, right? So here it goes, folks from a student who's been taking the course a little longer than you. Just a little bit. Don't I look good? <laughs> Here are the answers to the class. Do your research. Do the research in your life experiment now. Live boldly and unapologetically in the body you have and the life you have today because you only have today. Keep your interest rate low by acting in appreciation of what you truly value and learn to find value in everything. Don't defer your life loan. The cost is too high. And lastly, although I did not get to share these words with my mother, I will share them with you. And if you listen and trust me, which is difficult for a, you know, <laughs> Your time in life school can be a joyous experiment to you and to my mother, who I know is listening in a realm that is far away and yet right here beside me at the same time. You are whole, perfect, and complete exactly as you are and exactly as you are not, right now, not tomorrow, right now. And I love you with a radical love. Now take your ass to classes. Congratulations, class of 2015!